I have an entire studio set up here from Lenco, a backdrop and three fluorescent continuous lights. It was quick and easy to set up. In this video, I'll show you what each item is and how to set it all up. I'll start with the backdrop, then move into the lights. I'll also talk about some of the benefits of using this kind of lighting. And last, I'll show you some of the results that I got when I had a model into this studio. First, I'll set up the backdrop support system. I have two 9-foot stands here. Since I'll be raising this up fairly high, I want a good amount of stability at the base, so I'm going to stretch these feet out pretty wide. Next, I need to put together the crossbar. It comes in four sections. Each fits into the next and clicks into place with this little silver tab. Then each end fits over a screw that sticks up from the two vertical stands. There's a wing nut on each one to hold the crossbar into place. Now before I put the wing nut on this side, I'm going to slide on these muslin clamps. I have six of them here. I slide them onto the crossbar and I'll clip my backdrop onto them. Before I do that though, I want to add these backdrop holders to the vertical stands, three on each side. You attach them with Velcro around the stand, and I'll attach the backdrop to these too. More on this in a minute. I have three backdrops here, black, white, and chroma green. I'm going to use the black backdrop today. It's 10 feet by 13 feet, so I have plenty of space to work with when my model is here. I start off by clipping the top corner to a muslin clamp, then the side to the backdrop holder. I'll come back to the rest of those in a minute. Moving to the other side of the backdrop, I'll clip it in and the top side holder, then distribute the rest of the muslin clamps in between, and I can raise up the backdrop and distribute the remaining side holders. Here's what I like about these side clips. There's an adjuster in between that will allow you to pull the backdrop taut to minimize wrinkles. That's key when you want to minimize your time in post-processing. Now that my backdrop is ready to go, I'll move on to the lights. I have three fluorescent light heads with light stands and soft boxes. Grabbing the first light stand, I'll fit a Flora X four bulb light head onto the top. It is held in place with a bolt. You just twist it until it's tight. Now I'll put the modifier on. I have these Flora X auto pop-up soft boxes, which double as reflectors. They fit right into the light head and snap into place. I'm going to put that aside for a moment and build the second light. Now I screw in four of these daylight balanced fluorescent light bulbs, and I can leave it this way or put on the soft box cover. With these lights, I can raise them up and down and angle the light head as well. For the last light stand, I'm going to build onto it to turn it into a boom so that I can bring light in from above my subject. I fit the end of the boom arm onto the light stand and tighten the knob, then add a single bulb light head. Now I need to clip on the weight bag to the opposite end of the boom arm and add a couple weights to it to counterbalance the light head. To modify the light, I'll add this Morning Glory combination reflector and softbox. It fits over the light head and you tighten the knob to hold it in place. This boom arm and light head are adjustable as well to extend the arm or change the angle of the light head. Now I can add the single fluorescent bulb and the softbox cover. So the studio is all set up. Now let's talk for a minute about the benefits of these fluorescent continuous lights. First, continuous lights in general do a few things for you. You can see where your light is in your scene without having to take a photo. They make it possible to use your camera's own meter for exposure adjustments. And you can use shutter speed to affect exposure. Those are all things that you can't do with strobes or with flashes. Also, continuous lights are less distracting for the photographer and for the subject. Now talking about fluorescent continuous lights in particular. They do not get hot like halogen and other continuous lighting options. That makes the model more comfortable, which means better photos. Now, one thing to keep in mind is white balance. Although these lights are daylight balanced, I found that creating a custom white balance really got my color spot on. You can do that easily in many cameras these days using a gray card or even just a white sheet of paper. Last, these particular lights from Linco are pretty lightweight and compact, so they are easy to move around the studio. Add to that the convertible soft box slash reflectors and you have a really flexible setup. Now let me share a few photos from my shoot with Jen the model. I started out using all three lights to get an even lighting look. I was able to keep Jen illuminated but still keep the backdrop dark by adjusting the position of the lights and keeping a bit of distance between Jen and the backdrop. Next I turned the boom light off to get a little more shadow and dimension. I moved the lights around a bit and closer or farther away from Jen to change the look. Last, I turned off one of the lights, leaving me with only one light on. This gave me a lower key, moodier look. 
I moved the slider around Jen so that the shadows and light fell exactly where I wanted them. I even moved the light behind her for a few shots to get an edgier effect. In the end, this kit was quick and easy to set up and I had plenty of flexibility to create different looks in my photos. So really, all you'll need to add is a camera and some creativity.